Hey everybody, Gina DeLuca here. So today I wanted to uh, do a video for you guys. I get asked a lot of the same questions regarding what happened to my painting. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, small things that can be done that add up and uh, give you the best chance at success for your painting and for a drying well and such. So I'll be going over the top 10 most important things that I can think of for guaranteeing or having the best chance at a guarantee at a successful painting. The first thing uh, I get asked a lot, my painting was beautiful and it looks completely different when it's dry. All my cells are gone. So a lot of times what that is, is your painting is not level. Maybe your work surface isn't level. If you're using thumbtacks, maybe one is out just a little more than the other one. What I do to combat this, I use C hooks. They're like little cup hooks. And, um, and I try to put them in past this little mark here um, where it's that little cut. Uh, this one, I was a little close because there was a knot and it's really hard to get it into a knot. But generally, uh, this works especially uh, well on bigger pieces. You know, smaller pieces, it kind of gets a little funny. But I find it's the best way for me to level my canvas. So I put the level on. And if it's one side to the other, all I have to do is tighten or loosen the hook. And you can be very precise, you know, a quarter of a turn. And it really helps to... Uh, to make sure that this level and it stays level once i make sure it's level i will put a mark at what i consider the top so that if i wind up moving my painting or turning it around i still know which way is level okay that's number one. That is like one of the biggest problems that people have is they think their painting is level and it's not. And then all of your paint runs off and you can tell because one side will have drips and the other side is fine. And also, if you see that the edge of one side is dry and this side still looks very wet, then that's still not level. Tighten your canvas. Okay, sometimes the paint will pull into the center and you lose your composition, you lose your cells, it all gets squished together. Um, that happens a lot on the bigger canvases, but I have seen eight by tens that were, you know, very, very floppy. So what I do, I take a spray bottle of water and just, Spray the back, get a little extra squirt in the corners so you don't get the buckling. Just kind of rub it in. And it dries very quickly. That's why you put that little mark on there. <laughs> it's very easy to turn this thing around and not realize it. And you'll, when you thump it, it'll start to sound like a drum doesn't really pick up very well on the uh, microphone, but trust me, it sounds like a drum. Mixing your paints. I've had a lot of people complain about when they're mixing uh, metallics in particular, they add their pouring medium and it gets lumpy. This can happen with paint that's a little older too. Um, if this happens to you, you add water, you add your water to it, let it sit. Sometimes you might have to let it sit overnight, but it will eventually come to consistency. What you can do to prevent this, 
Uh, today I will be using Floetrol as my pouring medium. I put it in a bottle, a separate bottle, and I put a little piece of nylon over top to strain it. Floetrol can be lumpy, but for folks in the U.S., this is the one of the least expensive alternatives to um, a professional pouring medium, and it works very well. But you need to strain it, and instead of having to strain the whole bottle, you just put this on, strain it as you go. Easy peasy. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in the bottom of the cup, just enough to cover the bottom. I have Artist Loft uh, Metallic Cobalt Blue here. Probably more than I need it. And then just mix that little in. bit. And you do a little at a time. And it incorporates a lot quicker that way. You don't get the lumps. And it's just a, it's just better to be proactive and take the precaution than to have to deal with letting it sit overnight. But also adding your pouring medium to the bottom of the cup, your paint doesn't stick to the cup when you put it in. Um, if you don't put your pouring medium in first, you'll notice when you get to the bottom of the cup, there's always a very thick layer that's stuck to the bottom and that's mostly paint that could have been mixed in. Okay, so now I will add a little bit more. And when I'm mixing, I, I like the bigger sticks, I just cut it in half and I smash it up against the side of the cup. These bigger sticks make the mixing much faster than those skinny ones. I smash it up against the side of the cup. If there's lumps, it helps to get them out, but also it makes less bubbles. And when I'm doing this, I'm making an effort to not really pull the stick out and put it back in. Then you're just folding in air. If you just smash it up against the side and just keep going back and forth, you'll actually see the pattern. It will all get mixed in there. Of course, scraping your sides every once in a while. But that mixes up super quickly when you do it that way. I'm gonna add a hair more of the pouring medium, flow troll, I should say. Because I'm doing one part paint to two parts flow trawl and adding this is a mixture of 90% water and 10% flow trawl that is eyeballed I don't measure anything unless I'm baking and so I add that until I get a consistency that I like which leads me to my next tip consistency how do you know what is the right consistency what does it mean to say it drizzles like warm honey <laughs> uh, the best way for me anyway to gauge the consistency of my paint is by looking at how the paint falls back into the cup. How does it land on the paint? Does it form a mound? Does it sink? If it forms a mound, I call that on the thicker side. If it blends right in, that's thin and if it sinks that's extra thin and dangerous not impossible but you run the risk of going too thin if it gets to the point where it sinks more than uh, 30 percent water 
add it to your paints or pouring medium, you run the risk of breaking the chemical bonds, which could lead to peeling and cracking. Also, what could lead to peeling and cracking is your paint being too thick. And the reason for that is the paint on the top is drying faster than the paint underneath. And that moisture needs to evaporate. It needs to go somewhere. Okay, so I think I've got my consistencies even. That is very important. Make sure that all of your paints are the same consistency because if not, when you go to tilt, one paint will run faster than another and go over top of your thicker paints and then you wind up with streaks in your painting and you may say, why did that happen? Your paints need to be the same consistency and the best way to check that is to see how they land in the cup. And as they sit, they can get thicker. So if you've been letting them sit, it is important to recheck just before you pour. So regarding mediums and which to use, uh, different mediums have different properties. Floetrol is actually a paint conditioner and it helps to extend your work time and it helps to level. It's supposed to reduce brush strokes. And so it's self-leveling. So there are some techniques where that might not be what you want. If you're doing the balloon kiss, having that extra work time doesn't really work to your benefit. But if you're doing something with palette knives, you know, uh, a big canvas that needs to be tilted a lot, then Floetrol can be your friend. Other pouring mediums, you know, like the Deco Art or the um, Liquitex, they they dry quicker, they set up faster, and um, if you're doing a big canvas, it will soak up that liquid very quickly. And so, base coats. Let's get to base coats. Why is a base coat important? A if you're using silicone, if the paint that is, the silicone that is in your paint hits your canvas first, then you may uh, wind up with the pits, the bald spots where you can see the canvas because the silicone hit the canvas and now it's rejecting the paint. If you lay down a base coat first, there is a far less chance of, uh, of that happening. Also, if you are going for cells, you're going for a ring pour, having a base coat when you're tilting helps you keep your composition because the paint that is on the canvas, you know, at some point the paint needs to stick to the canvas. So if you have a puddle, the paint that's on top is going to roll over. So if you're doing a ring pour and you have these beautiful rings, but you don't have a base coat, it's not going to stretch across a dry canvas. It's going to stick to the canvas and the paint over top is going to roll. Same thing if you're going for cells, you know, you pull up your cup, you have a beautiful puddle, but you have a dry canvas. Well, the paint has to stick to the canvas and you're going to lose those cells. One other good reason to put down a base coat is, uh, particularly if it's a lighter color, uh, say you do your pour and you hate it. Instead of just scraping it into the trash, scrape it all together back into the center and tilt again. I, I have saved paintings by doing that. But it doesn't work as well if you don't have that base coat down. So, very good reasons to have a base coat. Applying base coat. I like to use this, it's like a putty knife, little plastic putty knife. Um, I have these in my Amazon 
store. The link can be found in the description box. I find that uh, it makes putting the base coat on very easy, very fast, nice and even. And when I get to corners, a lot of times it's, it's hard to get the base coat to stick to the corners. It looks thinner there. This little tool is very handy. What I do is I just rock it and it pulls a little bit from the top over the corner without pulling it off of the corner. It just kind of helps to drag it on over. Okay, base coat is down, nice and even. Particularly if you are using white as base coat, torch your base coat to pop those bubbles. If you torch after you pour, you uh, run the risk of having tiny little bubbles from air popping up from your base coat. They can be annoying. Okay, silicones. What kind of silicone do you use? If you are using a thicker mix, uh, you can use pretty much any kind of silicone. Um, if you are using a thinner mix, you want a thinner silicone. You do not want your silicone thicker than your paint because you will actually see where it is pushing against your cells and misshapening your composition, which, you know, who wants that? This black thickened up just a hair on me, which is a bummer because that's my base coat. Which is another thing. Uh, you really kind of want your base coat to be a little thinner than the rest of your paint so that they slide easily and they don't fight back. And what I mean by fight back is you'll be tilting and, and you'll see like a little U shape where there's a thicker area and it's, it's pushing the paint. The paint will just go around it. So you want to try to avoid that if you can. Having a thinner base coat helps with that. All right, so silicone today, I'm gonna use the uh, OGX Coconut Milk Hair Serum. One drop is all you need. If I could do a half a drop, I would. And I'm gonna put one drop in each color. Now, with a thinner silicone, like the, <laughs> I can barely even tell what it was, but the three-in-one silicone, uh, you don't need to mix as much. It breaks up a lot easier because it's a very liquidy silicone. This is very thick, so I'm actually going to fold it in pretty well. I think that was like nine. I kind of eyeball it. Now this is a th thicker mix. I actually probably could have gone a little thinner here. I did not put any in the black. Uh, so you can, you don't have to. So now the cup, you do not want to put three ounces of paint in a five ounce cup. What will happen? When you turn it over, all of the paint is here. It has to run down the cup. It's already mixed by the time it hits your canvas. So if you want nice juicy cells and color separation, 
that is very important. Very, very important. It's the best way to avoid making mud from a flip cup. All right. So regarding opaques and transparents, it's good to know which of your paints are opaques and transparents. These are all metallics. And uh, so they're all going to be opaque. Black is opaque. If you're working with transparents, it is important to know that. If I were to use, say, uh, this Quinacridone Magenta with this black, it'll look beautiful when it's wet. And when it dries, you won't even be able to see the magenta because it's transparent and the background is showing through. So when choosing a background, it's important to remember that. And if I wanted to do magenta on a black background, I would add an opaque to it, whether it be silver or metallic red uh, or white even, something to, to give it a little more opacity so that it stands out from the background. So today I'm using all opaques. I don't really have to worry about it. The metallics uh, have a, I think metallics look fantastic on a black background. It makes them pop. It gives them more of a 3D feel. In the bottom of my cup, I'm going to add the color that I used for my background. That increases your chances of getting that lacing that will match the back. All right. So now I have a Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue, Copper, Silver, and Metallic Leaf Green, all Artist Loft. I'm going to do the Copper. first and then the blue because I love this blue against the copper silver Okay, my cup is full. Regarding how much paint to use, um, what I there's a chart uh, in in my group. Go make some art that has it all laid out for you, including your side measurements and everything. Uh, if you don't feel like doing the math, but if you wanted to do the math, you take your length in inches, your side by inches. Multiply, get your square inches, divide your square inches by 28. And then the number that you're left with is how many ounces of paint you'll need. Paint mixture, the whole thing, not paint alone. Always have tweezers on hand. Schmutz happens. Get the schmutz when you see it so it doesn't mess up your cells or your composition. Okay, that's starting to thicken up, so I need to get cracking. I'm just going to put an X in here. All right. This is easy on the small canvases. Can't do that on the big ones. Okay, let's pull this off. 
this is going to be more than enough paint to cover this canvas because I put down a base coat. But you have to have the base coat. It really helps you to uh, control your paint a lot better. I can, I can manipulate the painting so that my center stays exactly the same, whether it's on a 24 by 30 canvas or a 10 by 10, because I'm using a base coat. Okay, this is the point where patience is key when it comes to tilting. When it comes to the, your cell development, if you let this sit just for a little bit, there will be a lot more cells that pop up. If you don't see cells right away, it doesn't mean that they won't happen, but your paints need to level out the Rayleigh-Taylor instability um, is basically the reaction between paints. You see it uh, in a more natural fashion if you're not using silicone, but density still do play a part here. And the silicone that is in there wants to rise to the top. It needs time to do that. Heat will also help. It helps pop bubbles, which is very important. Otherwise, you wind up with tiny little, tiny little pits in your dried painting that when you go to clean it can be a pain in the butt if you're using the, uh, the cornstarch technique to clean. So the letting this sit will allow more cells to develop it will allow them to get bigger so that when I do go to tilt, I will be able to stretch them out and have nice, big, juicy cells. And this is more than enough paint, so I'm gonna have to dump some off. Make sure you don't leave too much paint on your canvas. That is, uh, that could lead to disaster. So where do I want to go first? And there's still cells popping up on their own, I see them. Okay, I'm gonna do this corner first. Tilt very slowly. There's no reason to whip that paint around. If you're trying to maintain your composition, keep your cells, you really want to uh, take your time and be patient. I seem to have misplaced my corner catcher, so I'm improvising with a piece of u bow I cut off from a painting. Now you can do this to kind of help you not lose so much paint. You can use a piece of folded cardboard. Okay, now I've brought the weight of my paint back to center. You can see the weight of the paint. It's where it's moving the most. That's the weight of the paint. Bring that back to center before you change directions. So I've put my weight back into the center
Okay, now I'm gonna come in this direction. Again, coming back to center. I think I want a little bit more of that black. So, because I conserved my paint, I can do this. I can tilt a little bit of this off. Conserving your paint gives you options. You have more options for your composition. Okay, I really like how this turned out. These colors look very pretty together. Yay. Okay. Scrape your edges. The paint that is dripping off of there will pull paint with it. It'll pull the paint from the sides, which will pull it from the top. Kind of the same theory as when I am uh, applying my base coat on the edge, you just pull it from the top. That can also uh, mess up your painting. But also another good reason to scrape the bottom is you can keep an eye on it. And if you see that there are drips coming off of one side and not everywhere, then your painting may not be level and you wanna keep an eye on that to make sure that it's not ruining your composition. Okay, I'm gonna clean up and I'm gonna bring you in for a close up. Okay, here it is. I really like how this turned out and I think it's gonna be very pretty once it's dry. I'm a huge fan of metallics. But there it is. I hope that this video was helpful to you. Uh, there were a lot of things I learned in there from trial and error. A lot of stuff I learned from uh, asking questions myself. So I hope having them compiled in one place is beneficial to y'all. All right, this is where I say, please like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. Do check out the description box below for links to my uh, GoFundMe pre-order campaign for my third CD. Click on that link, have a gander. The video was worth watching, trying to see me look comfortable in front of a camera. Uh, it's not my bag. I prefer being back here. Uh, but, um, yes, so there's that. There is my Amazon store where pretty much everything that I use is, uh, available in there. And if you enter through that link, anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, I make a small commission of at no additional cost to you. 
So it's a way to uh, help me out without causing you any headaches. Um, what else? My website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can purchase my paintings and my music. And go make some art. Join us on Facebook. Post your masterpieces. Uh, that was too zoomed in. I'm looking very shaky. I need more coffee. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Be inspired. So join us over there. And uh, that's it for me, you guys. This video is long enough. I don't want people yelling at me. All right. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.